Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today I have a really fun project to share with you all. <laughs> okay, so as you all know, I am an ambassador for Love Notions Patterns and what that means is um, I work closely with Love Notions. Um, I am part of the team that does beta testing for all of the new patterns. Um, I mean, I don't do all of them, but you know, we're a group of about, I think about 25 of us that um, help with, you know, beta testing of patterns before it goes out to the regular testing group. Um, we help provide content for the channel, um, all that kind of stuff. And as a thank you here at the end of the year, Tessa and Tammy, who run Love Notions, um, decided to do a little bit of a thank you and gift each of the ambassadors with a little fabric gift card. But they went about it in a very fun way. So what they had us do was they had us pick out um, two to three fabric stores that we like to shop, where we like to shop. So um, we had to turn that in and then um, we received a person. So um, I was given a name of one of my fellow ambassadors, if you're curious who I got. Um, I'll link down to the blog post of the reveal of everyone because I don't I still don't know who had me. Um, but we were given a name and we were given these links to these fabric stores that they like to shop. And then our job was to go through these fabric shops where they like to shop. So this helped with, because we're all from around the world, so this helped, you know, using fabric stores where they could easily, sh where everyone could easily shop, basically. So we went through and picked out two or three different fabrics and then paired them with Love Notions patterns. It could be a hack, it could be, um, I think a, a, some people did like a couple of different patterns to make an outfit, um, but then the idea was, you. Uh, so then I received from my Secret Santa a couple of fabric picks from one of my the fabric stores that I had selected. So a couple of fabric picks and then um, what they thought I should make with it. So um, it was just a lot of fun. And so then Tess and Tammy gave everyone a gift card to that fabric store where our Secret Santa had shopped for us. And then we got to purchase the fabric and make up what our Secret Santa had suggested for us, which was just a really, is a lot of fun. And I'm anxious to see who actually had my name. So I am filming this on Monday. You're watching it on Friday. And I am so excited. Um, Friday is the reveal where we'll find out who had us. Um, but my Secret Santa did such a great job and I can't um, wait to talk you guys through this and to show you if mine is a hack It is a, a pattern mashup and I'm going to show you how I went about that But before we get too far into this today is Friday I hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving if you're here in the US. Hope you had a wonderful holiday yesterday um, But today is Friday, which means it is a love notions feature Friday and today's love notions feature Friday is the compose robe And oh my gosh guys, I wear mine all of the time <laughs> pop footage of me in it. Um, in fact, we did a fun little reel for Love Notions where we were all in, you know, like some of us in our com composed robes and then we spun and we were in our outfits that we made, which is just a lot of fun. Um, but I wear my composer. It's my robe that I wear all of the time. So um, I recently made the Ligon robe from um, Cashmerette and that actually is at my parents' house. It's my robe at my parents' house because um, right now I'm back and forth between my place and my parents with my mom being um, uh, ill. So uh, that is what I have been doing. So that robe lives there and the composed robe lives here. Um, it's a fabulous pattern and a great gift to make people. There's a whole bunch of different options. So uh, if you're looking to make uh, Christmas gifts for people, this is a great pattern. Five dollars today only. Use Tomcat 10. You can get an additional 10% off that price. So definitely worth having a look. Okay, let's talk about what my person picked for me. So I was given, um, again, I picked three fabric stores and one of those was June and Lou. So I do, um, June and Lou is a smaller fabric store, but she carries a lot of the European designers, including See You at Six. You guys know how I feel about the See You at Six fabrics, both the rayon chalets or viscose chalets, as well as the French terries with matching ribbing. <laughs> Big love affair. Love that designer line. Um, anyway, uh, June and Lou is one that I put on my list and uh, my secret Santa picked, um, from June and Lou. So they sent me, or she sent me, because we're all female, um, but she had sent me a couple of different um, fabrics that she should, thought would work for me. And this is the one I decided to go with, and I'll bring it up close because it's really beautiful. It's this beautiful terracotta with like a, just a little faint pattern in there. Isn't that gorgeous? It matches my lipstick really well. <laughs> 
So definitely in my color palette. It's one of my softer colors that I can wear. And um, yes, just a really, really beautiful viscose chalet. I already knew I liked this um, substrate. So picking, you know, one of the patterns that she had picked out for me was a no-brainer. Um, and then for the pattern, she picked the Salt Whistle neckline to mash that onto the Harmony blouse. So I don't know why this never occurred to me. I love a good square neckline, and the Salt Whistle has the square neckline. And actually, that was probably, that may be my favorite feature on the Salt Whistle, to be honest. I love that pattern. It's absolutely delightful. Um, but I think that maybe my favorite detail of that is the square neckline. I just find it very flattering on many different bodies, including a large bust. So um, her idea was to hack that neckline onto the Harmony. And I'm going to show you in just a second how I did that. So we'll go to the cutting table and I'll show you how I did that, um, did all of that mashup. But um, I also decided to use the Salt Whistle sleeves. So the Salt Whistle has a really full sleeve that ends in, one of the options, that ends in the... Um, uh, Elastic is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> now I did measure, because I obviously I used the arm side of the Harmony, the sleeved arm side of the Harmony. The Harmony comes sleeveless or with sleeves, and there are two different cut lines depending on if you're going sleeveless or with sleeves. So I went with the sleeved Harmony blouse, and um, I just popped the salt whistle um, sleeves right on, and I show you how I checked to make sure that that would work, because that doesn't always work. Um, especially with a woven pattern, but it did on this one. Uh, then I just made the Harmony top as is and added a tear here at the bottom. And I basically, it's a drop waist dress and I just think it's so lovely. I added um, 17 inches on, of a 17 inch, I think 17 inches. Ooh, now I'm wondering. I'm, I'm almost positive. A 17 inch rectangle that I gathered onto the front and onto the back. Um, to make this a tiered dress and to give me the midi length that I wanted and I just think it's a lot of fun and I think this is going to be just lovely to wear even even though it's winter and it's cold I've gotten some fleece line tights that are amazing um, to help me wear a lot of my dresses well into the cold weather but I think wearing this with my uh, lace-up boots would be a lot of fun I think wearing a blazer over this or a cardigan could be a lot of fun um, even tying like a button-up shirt over it so where it would look almost like a tiered prairie skirt, that could be a lot of fun. So there's a lot of options on ways I can wear this. Um, and definitely when the spring hits, I can just wear it as is with bare legs. But I'm so pleased with my new Salt Whistle Harmony hack. And I don't know why I never thought of putting those patterns together. But I mean, thank you. If my secret sewist is watching this, <laughs> thank you, my secret Santa. Thank you so much for pushing me, yeah, pushing me to do that. Because it's maybe not something I would have thought about um, a mashup I would have thought about doing. So that is just so much fun when you can um, expand your imagination a little bit and try something a little bit different and I am very pleased. I made the size medium with the full bust for the Harmony and I shortened it one inch at the waist which is um, what I do for my Harmonies all of the time just because in all my Love Notions patterns because I'm very short in the torso I need to take things up that inch at the waist. And there we have it, my Harmony Salt Whistle mashup. All right, I will now take you over to the cutting table and show you how I mashed these two patterns together. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. I'm happy to answer them. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Get some sewing in. And I will see you on Sunday, actually, with a little bit of a chat. I have a chat to share with you. So uh, that's very exciting. Oh, also before we go to the cutting table, today's the beginning of the Color Guru Black Friday sale. So if that was something you were interested in, now is the day, now is the time to go over there. Tomcat Color gets you 20% off now through Monday the 28th. So if that's something you are wanting to grab for yourself or for a loved one, I'm purchasing it today for my mother-in-law. Um, now's the time to do that. Um, also, the cashmere sale is still going on right now. So if you want to get your free PDF pattern and signed up for the All Access, um, that will be good through Monday as well, the 28th. So if you haven't had a chance to go over there and do that. Okay, I think that's all I have. <laughs> Get some sewing in this weekend. I'll see you on Sunday. Bye. Okay, I'm going to show you how I'm going to mush my Salt Whistle and my Harmony together. Um, I'm using the neckline of the Salt Whistle onto the body of the Harmony. Uh, and then I'm going to show you how, to, how you can kind of see if you can mash a sleeve 
from another pattern with, from one pattern with another pattern. All right, so the first thing, uh, these are the things you're gonna need. You're gonna need your Harmony front and your Harmony back, and you're gonna need the Salt Whistle front, Salt Whistle back, your Salt Whistle sleeve, and then your uh, facings, both your front and back facings, of which my back facing has gone missing, but it is around here somewhere. There it is. <laughs> your facings. Now, we're not gonna have to do anything with the Salt Whistle facings. Those will be fine, we'll set those aside. We will need the sleeve here in a second, but I'm gonna set it aside for now. So we'll start with the front and then we'll move on to the um, back. I'm making sure I am in frame. There we go. Okay. <laughs> okay, so hopefully that was all fine. Okay, so I want my, we're gonna start with my Harmony front and so I need the salt whistle front. So we'll put the back pieces over here. So what I'm gonna do, um, our front of our Harmony and the front of our Salt Whistler are both cut on the fold. So I'm just gonna line up my fold lines here together. So now, the name of the game, we may be, um, we're changing the neckline, okay? So that may be adding or subtracting from the original Harmony. So I'm just gonna take my Salt Whistle and I'm just gonna scoot it up the Harmony on that line until my shoulder seams meet. And they may be a different shape, and these are a little bit different shape, but I just want them to match up here at the front, and I wanna make sure that my fold lines are all matched up, okay? So now I'm just gonna set some weights here so that nothing shifts on me. So I'll be adding a little bit to the shoulder here on the Harmony, but that's okay because it's just taking the neckline a little closer into the neck. Um, it won't affect my shoulder line any. And I'm just going to draw in and do a little bit on my shoulder till that meets up. Draw in my neckline. So I have had to add a little bit to the front here, but what I'm gonna do is just put some tape. So when I'm cutting out a Harmony per normal, I can just fold this little excess bit out of the way. Um, so the way I like to do this when I'm cutting things out, and I'll do that when I cut this out, instead of cutting out this new neckline here, I'll just use my tracing wheel. So I'll cut, you know, everything out like I was cutting out the Harmony, and then I will just press really hard my tracing wheel along this cut line um, to where it perforates, not perforates, but it leaves a mark on the fabric on the other side, and then I'll go and hit it with my rotary cutter to, um, this will mark the fabric really well so I can see where I need to cut. Um, you guys have seen me do that before, but... There we go. So I have two separate shoulder lines now for my Harmony. Um, and I'll just, you know, whenever I'm making it in the future, cut out what I wanna cut out. But for the most part, it stays the same. Just gonna trim this out. Just a little bit that we have connected here. So basically what I'm gonna do is just cut this off and I will tape this to the back like so. All right, so yeah, when I'm cutting out the salt whistle neckline, I'll just press really hard and do this. And then when I'm cutting out the harmony neckline, I can just fold this little excess bit here out of the way and then I can have my original harmony that's there, okay? There we go. All right, so there, my front is done, but we're, we are gonna need this here for a second in the sleeves. And then for my back. All right, I do want to keep this beautiful shaping that's here on my back. However, um, I don't want this little keyhole area. I'm gonna cut out two of the backs, sew them together so I get the beautiful shaping. And then once I've sewn my, um, I'll sew my front to my back at the, um, oh my gosh, the shoulder, <laughs> and then I'll attach my facing. So my facing will still get cut on the fold, but I want to eliminate this little extra piece. So I've just drawn a line here, um, and we can even fold that out of the way. So that isn't gonna be part of what I'm cutting out at all, okay? Now I have gone ahead and drawn in my seam allowance here, okay? 
because this is going to be important for lining up my back. Disregard the, the X there. So I want to line up the back of my salt whistle because um, it's cut on the fold with that seam line of the back, okay? So I'm just going to line that up. I'm really just paying attention to, you know, this straight area through here. And now I'm going to take it up until it meets my shoulder line, just like I did for the front. I can throw some weights down there. And now I'm going to draw in this neckline. Like so. Keeping in mind that I do have that seam allowance that I am going to need to keep. Like so. Okay. So that will need to extend past this because it's on the fold line. But now I have a little bit higher neckline, but I've made the salt whistle before. It can still easily get on, on and off over your head. So I don't need that keyhole opening. So now I'm just going to cut this out. So now our facings will fit really nicely in there. And again, just like with the front, cut that away from the bigger piece of paper, just like with the front, um, and that piece is still there if I did want the keyhole later on down the road. I'm just going to fold that out of the way for now. But, um, you know, I can just follow the original neckline if I'm cutting out a harmony or follow, you know, this new one if I want to do the salt whistle. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so now my harmony is going to get cut out per normal. Let's move this excess too far. So now the question is, how can you tell if a sleeve from one pattern is going to fit into the sleeve of another pattern? Because I have done a full, uh, or not a full, a broad back adjustment on the um, Harmony. I'm gonna put my salt whistle pieces, they can go back into the file. Um, so what I love, guys, this is called a curve, uh, curve runner. I got this at a Linda Lee um class that I went to, but I know uh, Lindsay from Inside the Hem has found these on Etsy. So just look for a, a curve runner, curve runner ruler. Um, you know, if you search that, it, you know, it's great. I will, if Linda Lee has them on her website, I will link it down below. But what you're going to do is you're going to measure your arm's eye of your front and your back. And I'm just going from cut edge to cut edge. And you're wanting to, to do it right on the um, sewing line, not on the cut line. I'm eyeballing three eighths of an inch just because I sew it so much. But if you want to draw in your seam allowance, you can. Okay, so I've got 11 there. So I'm just going to write, I'm just going to write 11 right there. Okay, so I've got 11 for the back. to get confusing with other marks here and now I'm gonna measure the front so I just start at zero three-eighths of an inch in because that's what my seam allowance is and you just it's like a rotary you just roll it around okay and that's also 11 that makes life easy that's odd too for them to be the same okay so 11 we're just going to do some math right here on the harmony. So 11 plus 11 is 22. Now we're going to take away three fourths of an inch because when I put my sleeve in, now my sleeve's going to have the same seam allowance here at the um, underarm seam. So I will have my three eighths of an inch here. So we can leave the three eighths of an inch included in the measurement for here at the under underarm. But my sleeve is going to be attached at the um, shoulder when my sleeve gets put in and that's three eighths of an inch on each side. So 22 minus three quarters is 21 and a quarter inch. Okay. So that's what I'm 21 and a quarter for, um, 
yeah, 11 plus 11 minus three quarters is 21 and a quarter um, of an inch for my arm's eye. Okay. So now I also want to do the same thing for my sleeve. Let's measure it. And then I'll tell you how these all apply. Okay, so this is going to be longer than 12, so I've hit 12. And now, doing run around. All right, I hit right at 11, that same way around. So 12 plus 11 is 23. So this is 23 inches. You want your sleeve measurement to always be bigger than your armhole because you need that ease. This is a very flared sleeve. It does not, it tells you, the instructions do tell you to, to do like basting stitches to ease it in. You know, I don't do that. I ease in with my fingers, but there isn't, it is not a gathered sleeve cap. So that's also important. If it's a gathered sleeve cap, you can pretty, pretty much put any gathered sleeve cap into any armhole and it will, for all intents and purposes, work. Um, but this one is a little bit more fitted. So I have a difference of um, one and three quarters inch here in the top. Now, if you're making like a tailored shirt, like a button up shirt that has a very low sleeve cap or and you're using like tightly woven shirting, typically three quarters of an inch to an inch is the amount of ease that you want in that sleeve cap. This pattern, I am using a viscose chalet, which is a little bit, it's a looser weave than a, um, like a tightly woven shirting, for instance. So the looser the weave, the more ease you can put into a sleeve cap and build that in. For instance, if you're doing like a wool coating, those have a lot of, um, there's a lot of wiggle room in the, in the warp and weft of wool because wool is a very airy fiber. And I don't want to get too complicated here, but <laughs> wool you can have a lot of ease in the sleeve cap of like a wool blazer or a wool coat because that will all squish in and give you beautiful shaping. So general rule, the tighter the weave, the less amount of ease you want in that sleeve cap, the looser the weave, the little bit more you can have. So again, I have an inch and three quarters of ease in the sleeve cap and I think that's gonna be just fine. Um, I should be able to ease that pretty easily without getting any puckers. So um, yeah, I think it works. I think that I don't need to do anything. Now, a lot of people are gonna be like, but the, you know, the curve isn't gonna match just perfectly. And you're right, the curve isn't gonna match per, actually. Well, my notches aren't gonna match. Okay, here, we're gonna do this. So I'm just gonna mark different notches because that will make life a lot easier. So I'm gonna, wait, hold on. Is that the front? Yes, okay. <laughs> so I'm just gonna mark new notches, because that will be important. And honestly, that shaping is not too bad. Like that fits that curve pretty easily. Um, it's a different spot than the what the notches are in the Harmony, but that's okay. So I think it's gonna be fine. <laughs> yes. You know, technically, if you were drafting a pattern, yes, it's a little more complicated with the sleeves. If you were doing a very tailored sleeve, you do want it to be um, more precise. But honestly, guys, I feel like so many areas make sewing so much harder than it needs to be. For the amount of, you know, perfection is never going to be part of anyone's sewing practice because perfection is impossible to hit. I've said it before, we don't want perfection to steal our joy. Like that, the whole joy of creating and making with sewing, perfection can steal that so easily. Um, not that you shouldn't do your best and get a really good end product, but we can't, nothing is ever going to be perfect. And it's really fun to be able to mish and mash your patterns, um, different ones together and use elements you like from one to another. So a little bit of smooshing is always allowed. And I've said this in my classes as well, but um, um, I've said this in my classes as well, but perfection is we're not going to be making a, a perfect garment but we're going to be making a really great garment and if you can have creative freedom to mush your patterns and easily mush your patterns why not take it so now you guys can see what the results are of my um, finished shirt and um, yeah hopefully you can see that 
a little bit of fudging. You know, fitting is an art, not necessarily a science, although there is a little bit of science that's in there. So hopefully you've enjoyed this and found this helpful. And uh, yeah, back to me. <laughs>